At least 38 people were killed in Myanmar on Wednesday, in what the UN described as the bloodiest day since the coup took place a month ago. UN envoy to Myanmar Christine Scratner Bergener said there was a shocking footage coming out of the country. Witnesses said security forces opened fire with rubber and live bullets. <laughs> Mass protests and acts of civil disobedience have been seen across Myanmar since the military seized power on 1st February. Protesters have been calling for an end to military rule and the release of the country's elected government leaders, including Aung San Suu Kyi, who were overthrown and detained in the coup. Coup and the violent suppressions of protests that followed have led to international condemnation, which Myanmar's military has so far ignored. Reacting to Wednesday death, the UK called for a United Nations Security Council meeting on Friday, while the US said it was considering further action against Myanmar's military. The latest violence comes a day after Myanmar's neighbors urged the military to exercise restraint. <laughs> U.S. Capitol Police said on Wednesday that it has learned of a possible plot to breach the Capitol by a militia group driven by conspiracy theories suggesting former President Donald Trump would return to power on March 4. The Capitol Police said in a statement that it has obtained intelligence about the plot planned by an identified militia group and already made a significant security upgrade to the Capitol starting earlier this week. The security upgrades include establishing a physical structure and increasing manpower to ensure the protections of Congress, the public and the police officers. Some canon conspiracy theorists have said that Trump will be inaugurated on March 4 because that was the original inauguration day for president until 1933 when it was moved to January 20. During a Senate hearing on Wednesday, Lisa Smith Loba, acting intelligence chief of Department of Homeland Security, DHS, confirmed to lawmakers that the DHS and Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, had internally issued a joint intelligence bulletin about extremists discussing March 4th and March 6th. Security has been tied around the Capitol since January 6th riot, which interrupted Congress' electoral vote count of US President Joe Biden's victory. Five people died in the attack, including a Capitol Police officer. Four, three, two, one, ignition. We have liftoff. The SpaceX company has managed to land one of its Starship prototypes at the end of a high altitude test flight. Serial number 10, SN10, touched down in Boca Chica, Texas, in contrast to its predecessors, SN8 and SN9, which crashed into the ground. But that wasn't the end of the story next-generation space vehicle put down heavily on its extended legs. A fire then developed around its base, and eight minutes later, SN10 blew itself apart on the landing pad. Nonetheless, SpaceX will be hugely encouraged by the test and the fact that the prototype successfully executed its in-flight maneuvers and managed to make a reasonably soft landing. These milestones will give the company confidence as it moves forward with the ambitious concept. SpaceX envisages a Starship replacing its existing Falcon rocket. It will culminate with landing on the landing pad in Boca Chica. These vehicles carry out regular missions, both crewed and uncrewed, for the U.S. space agency NASA, the American military and other commercial concerns. But CEO Elon Musk says the new 15-meter-tall Starship will do it all, bigger and better, orbiting satellites and carrying passengers both around the Earth and to off-world destinations such as the Moon and Mars. Walt Disney Company will close at least 60 Disney retail stores in North America this year as the company revamps its digital shopping platforms to focus on e-commerce.
Disney also is evaluating a significant reduction of stores in Europe, a spokesperson said, adding that locations in Japan and China will not be affected. The company currently operates roughly 300 Disney stores around the globe. Disney did not say how many people would lose their jobs as a result of its store's closures. Consumers have been moving to digital shopping over physical location, and chains including Walmart and Macy have shuttered physical stores. The global coronavirus pandemic accelerated that change in behavior when people were forced to stay at home. Over the past few years, Disney has expanded its shops inside other retailers such as Target. Those locations will continue to operate, as well as Disney Parks stores. Disney licensed products also will remain widely available through third-party retailers. Digital shopping gives Disney a chance to offer a much broader selection and include higher-end products from all of its Disney, Pixar, Marvel and Star Wars brands. The world has a new tool for soft power, COVID-19 vaccines. Large producing nations are cutting deals for foreign allies or countries where they seek influence, despite pressing needs at home. China is hashing out agreements across Africa. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is under legal scrutiny for sending shots abroad. And Russia is distributing across resource-rich Latin America. Mexico's Foreign Minister. They are sharing this vaccine when they have not yet finished vaccinating their own country. So it has even greater value than just sympathy or closeness of ties with Mexico for them to send us these vaccines. It is not a donation. We are paying for them. But if the Russian government did not allow this shipment, we would not be able to access these vaccines today. There is perhaps nowhere this new brand of diplomacy is more evident than the world's biggest maker of vaccines, India. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is leveraging supplies to strengthen regional ties and push back against its rival, China. It's only just got its domestic immunization program up and running, but India has already supplied at least 15.6 million doses of the locally made AstraZeneca vaccine to 17 countries, either through donations or commercial contracts. Some Indians have criticized the government's focus on exports when they say more needs to be done to inoculate at home. Critics say so-called vaccine diplomacy is undermining efforts to create fair distribution. The World Health Organization urged nations against distributing vaccines unilaterally. It says one-on-one -on -one deals undermine its global scheme, COVAX, and its goal of equitable access. It already has some electric models coming down the production line, but now Volvo says all its cars will be fully electric by 2030. Even hybrids will be a thing of the past. The Swedish brand says it's convinced no one will want a petrol engine by the end of the decade. Volvo aims to get halfway to its goal by 2025. To get there, it will launch a new family of electric cars over the next few years. All will be sold online only and feature wireless upgrades and fixes, an approach pioneered by Tesla. The move comes as car makers face emissions targets in Europe and China and fossil fuel bans in some countries. Last month, Ford said its lineup in Europe would be fully electric by 2030. Other brands, including Jaguar and Bentley, have made similar pledges. Now, going electric is an expensive process for car makers, which have to totally rethink design and production. It also spells upheaval and maybe job losses for suppliers, as EVs require far fewer parts than conventional vehicles. But Volvo says the move will ultimately allow it to radically reduce the complexity of its model lineup.